hello friends in this video i will discuss on the topic third of fights this is the first chapter of the third semester paper third of fights gymnosperm and the angiosperm embryology in the first chapter generally we will study the general account on the third of fights characteristic significance and classification of the third of fights so just look at the picture so very easily so you can uh, identify that what are the pteridophytes okay the pteridophytes are the cryptogamic plant generally look at the evolutionary trend the algae the next that is followed by the lichens and bryophytes and later the pteridophytes are evolved the pteridophytes are simply refer as cryptogamic vascular thallophytic organisms so usually they bears the spores on the lower surface just all the look at the photographs so usually the common characteristic of they are look like a leafy in appearance and green in appearance and they consist of the spores on the lower surfaces so this is a general characteristic so look at the general properties of pteridophyte the first one they are the first from formed land plant second character they have the uh, root system stem and leaves but no flower fruits and the seeds okay just like all the plant they are also consist of the photosynthetic structure that the leaves will be present and in the leaves below that you will find the spore bearing structure that is sori what you will find that's all the uh, below the leaf of this plant just uh, look at the photographs so very easily so you can find what is sori in the each sori they produce the spores these spores will help for the uh, reproduction so where actually the pteridophytes will grow the pteridophytes will grow in all places if some of the pteridophyte grow on the ground on the soil surfaces and some of them are grow on the other plant as a epiphyte and some of them are growing on a dead woods so and some of them are growing uh, banks of the rivers like that so it will grow in various habitat so usually the pteridophytes have a two types of generation that is the alternation of generation that's one is a gametophytic phase and another one is a sporophytic space okay gametophytic and sporophytic phase gametophytic phase is nothing but the gamete producing structure that is a plant body and the sporophyte is a spore bearing structure so usually pteridophytes have the long sporophytic generation than the gametophytic generation so usually if you look at the diversity of the pteridophytes in world there are more than 11000 species of pteridophytes are there generally pteridophytes are refer as fern and fern allele grows okay so there are about 36 families are there in the world and they represent 1200 species of ferns in the world in india there are about 1000 species of ferns are there and in karnataka especially 150 species of ferns and fern allele genera are there uh, that is about 70 genera of uh, fern and fern allele are there so usually these pteridophyte generally what earlier i told the classification is based on that uh, sori on adaxial surface or abaxial or in margin or in a induced condition this is how where actually the sometimes we can find the uh, both the side or sometime maybe in specific region so or maybe some of them are in a particular localities of the leaves or the um, leaf surfaces okay so each uh, pteridophytes have a different uh, spiral arrangement so and uh, this is the sporangia that is a spore bearing structure so generally uh, the sporophyte is uh, independent of the gametophyte 
so usually the in a primitive vascular plant what happens the sporophyte is independent so usually in case of the bryophyte the sporophyte is depend on the gametophyte but in case of pteridophyte that is a sporophyte is independent of the gametophyte that's one main uh, characteristic so if you look at the evolutionary trends in uh, each uh, sporophyte so usually the first group that is cellotopsida so usually they bears in a small uh, triangular uh, synanthium structure they produce the uh, sporophyte so later it may little bit turn to the cone like structure and in the equisinum they bears the strobilus and in again in case of the ferns and the fern groups they bears the on the adaxial surfaces so like that spore producing structure is slightly evolved in each step of the sporophytic development in the fern so usually uh, other characteristic that is uh, they have the vasculature plant vasculature is nothing but the conducting tissues what are the conducting tissue present in that is xylem and the phloem the xylem consists of the dead cells that carry the water and nutrient from the root to the rest of the plant phloem consisting of the living cells that distribute help for the sugar and amino acids in the pteridophyte so there are uh, coming to the next one is a leaves there are two types of leaves that's a microphyll and the megaphyll the leaves of the lycophytes they have the small ligulate or the single unbranched vein will be present those leaves are called as microphyll and some of them are the larger size and branched ones those are called as a megaphylls okay so usually the root have the help for the nutrition uptake and leaves will increase the help for the photosynthesis so this is the leaf structure and usually the leaf is uh, uh, when it is in young or the young shoot of the uh, pteridophyte is called frond during the frond uh, what happens leaves or uh, coil like a structure that is called as a circinate vernation when the young uh, leaf or the pteridophyte is coiled uh, to form a uh, ring like structure so that is called as a circinate vernation the frond of the pteridophytes or coiling like arrangement will called as the circinate vernation this is a special characteristic this i what i told that is a microphorophyll and the megasphorophyll arrangement of the leaves okay and uh, next is uh, the sporophyll structure that's a uh, sporophyll is nothing but the spore bearing structure so usually uh, in a lower uh, that is in xylotum they bear a special sporophyte characteristic in even the selaginella lycopodium they bears in a special strobilus structure but in uh, ferns they bears the sporophyll bears may be sori or the small cluster of the sporangia that bears the spores okay this is these are the some uh, uh, pteridophytes based on the evolutionary morphologies okay so what are the ferns ferns are the they are about uh, development vascular tissues and habitat they grow in all places that is a uh, all pteridophytes have the fur and the fur alle group that's why it what i told that is a, a sperm usually the sporophyte is have the deployed in nature that means so gametophyte is here uh, sorry sporophyte is not depend on the gametophyte so here what happens in case of the pteridophyte the sporophyte have the larger duration than the gametophyte that means the gametophyte have shorter life span uh, when compare with the sporophyte but in case of the uh, bryophyte the gametophyte have the long life cycle or the usually the sporophyte is depend on the 
gametophyte in case of the bryophyte but in case of pterodophyte the sporophyte is independent of gametophyte this is a frond what i told this is the young fronds are called as a fetal heads okay these are end that's a sarcinate ornation and usually the rhizomes will be present and this is the rhizome structure root is arising from the rhizins their block in color so this is the soridia frondi okay so coming to the classification the pteridophytes are divided into a different classes first class is xylotales the example uh, that's a family xylotaceae example xylotum the xylotum is simply called as rootless leafless pteridophyte and they consist of dicotomous branching and usually they bear the synangia this is the general characteristic of the first group that's the xylotus rootless leafless means there is no root and leaf will occur uh, like other pteridophytes in case of the xylotales and usually the branching pattern is dicotomous branching and usually synangia will be present so this is the xylotum nodium that's an example for xylotum next group is lycopodales that's the example is a family lycopodaceae example lycopodium they may be a terrestrial or epiphytic in nature and they bears the sporangia uh, sporangia on solitary and adaxial surfaces and usually the branching is also dicotomous branching so this is the lycopodium cernum so this is the sporophyte so what you are looking just like white structure that is a spore bearing structure that is a sporophytic structure next group in that same uh, in case of the lycopodales selaginellales are present that is a selaginella is example it is a creeping in nature dicotomous and they consist of special structure called rhizophore these rhizophore will help to the attach to the uh, stem in case of the selaginella and also they consist of ligules and also they have the two types of spores that's a heterospore so the at the end of the leaf so you can find the spore bearing structure the next one group is the equisetales equisetales example is equisetaceae equisetum is example here the stem is oral and laculate leaves are reduces that means here just look like a small stick uh, in campus also you can find the equisetum just it is just like a grass look like a grass and usually the leaves are highly reduced and small micro leaves will be present and sporangia fours they consist of the spore bearing structure that is called strobilus or here it is called as a cone and these cones produce the spores and uh, they have the special characters called elaters this is the characteristic of group a equisetaceae okay so usually this is the example equisetum okay next one group is that's a marsilaceae marsilia so that's a marsilia is called as aquatic fawn and usually amphibious in nature and the leaves are long petiolate here the four uh, petiolated leaves will be present leaves are pinnate sori with bears the sporocorp and usually they bears the different uh, spores that is heterospores so this is the uh, leaves are the tetra shape and long petiole will be present so what you need and this is how the sporocorp yellow marking is there uh, on a picture that indicate the sporocorp so you can find uh, commonly grow in a moist shady places in a paddy fields and moisture areas usually parsilia will be present so this is how the stem of the polypodium stem is look like and this is the cluster of the and this is how the complete uh, life cycle of the fern so usually the this is sporophyte is uh, deployed in nature and the gametophyte uh, that is a uh, applied in nature that's a n in number so this is actually green color what you are looking that's a gametophyte and the leafy like structure that's a sporophytic in nature and here the sporophytic generation is deployed and dominated as well as uh, so usually they have the long duration when compared with the gametophyte and this is the gametophytic structure short duration 
and usually prothalases look like a heart shaped structure and usually they help for the production of anthridi and the archegonia and usually the zygote will help for the development of new embryo so this this embryo will develop into a whole shoot or the plant this is the complete uh, life cycle of the uh, pteridophyte or the fern so usually first uh, they bear the spores and young gametophyte will present in that the anthridia archegonia will produce and uh, an archegonia produce egg anthridia produce the sperm and fertilization the goat will be formed go to the meiotic division so usually the new sporophyte that's a uh, heart shaped structure will produce from that the new plant will be produces so usually where actually n is marked out those are the haploid in nature and where 2n is marked it out this is the diploid in nature so this is the diagram is completely showing what are the diploid and the haploid stages of the fern development okay this is the life cycle of the fern so here easily so you can find it out and this is the significance of the fern so ecologically they have the uh, very important role they help for the soil uh, erosion prevention of the soil erosion some of the these uh, fronts the young shoot of the ferns used as a food in some places and uh, they used as a ornamental one and uh, they have the uh, especially in a carbon period they have the uh, very dominated on the earth surface that's the carboniferous period so that's why they are called as a um, carbon making sources in uh, coal formation help in a coal formation so this is how the uh, fern sora are look like this is a sporophyte and spore bearing structure young shoot of the uh, gametophyte okay so this is the in general characteristic that is the general properties or the characteristic of the pteridophytes and uh, their classification and significance of the pteridophyte this is the first uh, class general account of the pteridophyte uh, you can uh, any doubt so you can uh, clarify in the uh, live session also so once you study all these uh, general characteristic because uh, these general characteristic will ask for the main question so write the general characteristic of pteridophyte or uh, write the uh, class we are taking one uh, group and write their general characteristic for example write the general characteristic of class uh, ceratopsida so like that general questions will be asking and the significance just to only for two marks significance will be asking right the significance or importance of the pteridophytes will be asking so this is an overview of the pteridophyte general account in the next class we will go to the each class with the detailed examples so okay thank you